say, we pray as always, the Lord has been exceptionally good to you. Uh, despite the snowstorm that has uh, blanketed the East Coast, and what I'm reading in the news reports is headed through Texas, it left Dallas, is headed you know, toward Florida. So Florida uh, has a possibility that they may receive some snow as well. Uh, we believe in God that he's going to bring us through this. There were parts of, uh, of, uh, of Naples that surrounded us and which, which received snow today also. And we just ask the Lord to put his hand upon this year. Now, not that, you know, uh, we're trying to anyway get out of any weather conditions, but we just ask the Lord that he'll be merciful and bring us through. And if we do have to go through any snowy times, then we believe in God to help us and strengthen. Remember, God is the God of all things. Put it in his hands, he'll take care of it. It's Pilgrim Harvest Ministries, and we want to welcome you to our Friday Bible study. We pray that by the end of the study, if you're able to stay with us, that we will have said something that will be a blessing and an encouragement to you and give you a greater hunger for the Word of God. We're in the book of Zechariah, the 13th chapter, and we're going to believe God. He's going to open up the Word of God as a teacher, the Holy Spirit shows up, and we're going to mention you continually in our prayers who have been affected by uh, these snowstorms that have happened in the United States and also in parts of uh, Italy. Uh, let's believe God as we open in prayer. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, how we thank you that you have blessed us, you've encouraged us, you've touched us, you've helped us, you've strengthened us. We bind every spirit of darkness that would come to discourage in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I'm asking that your hand will be upon us and that your angels will encamp around us. Continue to touch us, O oh Lord, guide us and direct us. We are asking that the teacher of the Holy Spirit will show up and open up your word to us as we hungrily, eagerly, uh, with anticipatory uh, desire and hunger in our souls, uh, wait for the moving of the Spirit. Bless us tonight, Lord. Let not anything um, hinder or interrupt our study. And we pray, Father, that it's on the internet, that it will bless a lot of folks. We give you the praise and honor and the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Picking up in Zechariah chapter chapter 13 and the third verse. False prophets executed. If that title, or if that was carried out in the land in which we live in today, then there would be a lot of folks that would be in deep trouble because um, I believe prophecy is one of the most misused gifts in the body of Christ. There are true prophets, but there are also a lot of prophet liars that are out there that are running across the land. And the Holy Spirit will expose you. He got your number, in other words. Praise the Lord. Why, uh, yes. Why did you only do it up to uh, chapter 9? I mean, uh, verse 9. Verse 9. In chapter 13? Mm -hmm. They got more verses than that? What are you looking at? Thankful they didn't pick that up on camera there. Hallelujah. Okay, did you answer your own question? Okay, hallelujah. Okay, continuing on. It says, and it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that beget him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother that beget him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. And this is really giving um, the individual time to repent. But one thing I've learned about us as human beings, we hate to admit that we are wrong. We hate to repent. We will blame any and everybody that we can for our mistakes and our failures. But it's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So I'll notice that the most dangerous form of idolatry is that which speaks lies in the name of the Lord. Such is a part of Christendom that is corrupt. Your mother and I were at a meeting, this was several years ago, and in the meeting we, um, we had gone up for, I can't remember all the details of why we went forth um, in the prayer line, I, I don't remember, uh, but we went forth and um, one of the ministers came up to, uh, uh, to my wife and myself and they began to pray for us. Like I say, I don't remember exactly the uh, specifics of why we went forth. I, I don't remember. Um, but I do remember this. And while he was praying for us, and, and I listened to folks. When folks are praying for us or over us, 
I listen intently to everything they're saying. I don't miss anything. And he said in his, supposedly he was bringing forth a prophecy. He looked at my wife and myself and he said, my brother and my sister, God has great plans for your life. And uh, that didn't make my chest stick out at all. I, I continued to listen. He said, in fact, I see a house in the future that God is going to bless you with. Now, now again, what he said uh, was a safe prayer. It was nothing really specific. Um, it, it was pretty general as far as what he said. And he said, this is what the Lord is speaking to me. Now, we, he said something else that I can't remember, but... After he had, had left, my, my, uh, my wife and I looked at one another, and we knew that that was not from the Lord. We, we knew that. We knew that what he had, had said um, was not what the Lord was saying to us. See, we, we, we had spent some time at God's feet ourselves, and so what he said did not cause us to blink. We knew what God was doing in our life. Of course, um, we would definitely, uh, we still are believing God that he's going to bless us with a home. But if we don't get a home on this side of the grave, then we, we have a mansion waiting for us on the other side of the grave. We tried uh, when we were in uh, San Diego in 1996 to get a home, and we came very close to getting a home at that time, which would have been out of the will of God because God was moving us to again return to Naples to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And even though we tried with, with great vigor and, and great determination, the Holy Spirit said, no, not now. No, not now. So even though somebody may say in the name of the Lord of your life, you still are responsible for proving whether or not that is from the Lord. Many Christians have been, been led astray and tripped up and hurt because somebody that they trusted has spoken something into their life and they have not proven it themselves. So remember that. Prove all things. This verse does not mean that there actually will be false prophets in Israel during the time of the kingdom age, for there will not. The idea is so, so zealous will be Israel for the Lord in that coming hour that even if a son begin to prophesy falsely, he will be properly restrained by his parents, even to the place of execution, if necessary. I love the Lord more than I love anyone else. The Holy Spirit is impressing upon the reader how different Israel will be in that coming glad day after their conversion. Praise the Lord. Mr. Be Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the uh, Prime Minister of Israel, has a tremendous weight upon his shoulder to lead Israel uh, into the right way. Uh, his not knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and being surrounded by so many nations that literally hate Israel. Uh, the Islamic nations of the world label Israel as being uh, the great Satan. Uh, and they label the U.S. for their role in helping Israel uh, as being the little uh, Satan, or maybe vice versa. I can't remember which one is which one, but I, I, th I think it's the great Satan they call Israel and the little Satan they call the United States of America. But in spite of what they have said, Jesus Christ is still moving in the hearts and lives of his children in the United States of America. And despite the history of the United States, and despite what we're facing, despite that we're no longer uh, uh, missionaries is not our greatest export, despite the woes and the problems and the bills that have been passed, there still are some saints of God in the United States of America that love God and believe in God we trust. Hallelujah. Verse 4, and it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets, again, when it says that day, he thought a specific time, that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he had prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive us. Paul notes that the idea of this verse is, in the coming kingdom age, so knowledgeable will most people be in the word of God that those who are false will not dare attempt to propagate his false vision his false vision. That's why it's so important that we read and study the Word of God and ask the Lord to give us understanding in the Word of God. Um, I've read the Word of God since, I, since my, before my pre-teens I was reading the Word of God and I've had a hunger for the Word of God ever since and, and I've found over the years that you have to actually make time to read the Word of God. 
because there are things that are going to pop up. You're going to find yourself getting so busy in something. Uh, you're going to find yourself not being able to keep that, that time that you've said, Lord, this is what I'm going to spend with you. But if you keep on keeping on, the Lord will definitely open up doors. Verse 5. But he shall say, I am no prophet. I am an husbandman. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. So Paul knows this. In essence, this verse proclaimed that most preachers ought to simply quit. <laughs> because they have not been called by God in the first place. The truth is, they are no prophet, but instead an husbandman, i.e. a follower of secular employment. In the years in which...